Hi, I'm Ron. I'm driving home from a wedding, my friend's wedding. We just had a good time. And uh, Aubrey knew her since she was eight. It was a beautiful wedding. And it was just really a good time. And uh, some things are kind of happening today in conjunction with this wedding that are good. So I thought I'd share them while they're still fresh. So this morning I, I wake up and the Holy Spirit comes across my heart, engages my heart in a very strong and loving way that I hadn't felt in years. And what I felt he said to me was that I was his guest, an honored guest. And the reason I'm sharing this is because it's really not just me who's an honored guest by God. It's all of us. We are his honored guests. And it makes a difference because this wasn't something intellectual. This was emotional. This was love that I feel in my heart. Uh, if you don't feel God, it doesn't mean you're not saved, and it doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. It just so happens that my relationship with God is very emotional, and there's a lot of it. And so, so that was good. And what it is, is when you get something from God, there are different ways God will talk to you. He'll be, it'll talk to you in His Word, which is numero uno with a bullet you know the words in red you can't fail there and uh, then there is there are times when God will talk with us in our hearts and he will tell us things about ourselves or others and they're significant important and true and later on you know they had the wedding and then the reception and uh, two things occurred that were really cool uh, a couple weeks ago I had a dream where I was going up this mountain kind of like hill and it was a sunny day and there were trees there and it was just beautiful and there, I was sitting next to a girl with long brown hair and then on and she was on my left driving a vehicle and I was uh, in like kind of next to her just sitting there and then next to me on my right side was a Bible I'm like I wake up out of the dream like all right this is interesting and this had been going on for a couple weeks it happened a couple weeks ago and I had I was looking for the interpretation because I didn't know who this girl was what did it mean I just knew that every time I thought about the dream it bore witness again in, in my spirit that this was God. And so go to the wedding, go to the reception, and at the reception, at the table I'm sitting at with my friends, one of my friends brings one of their friends, and uh, it's uh, one of my friend's daughter's friends, so she's about 20-something. She's got the long brown hair, and I'm like, all right, this is interesting. So I'm like, Lord, what you got going on here? Because I really don't know. So I start talking to uh, Sarah, is the girl that my friend's daughter who brought her other friend. And uh, we were just talking, and uh, she had mentioned her, Sarah had mentioned that her friend had strong uh, anxiety disorders and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, well, I got healed of a spirit of depression, and I've had anxiety. It was a spirit. It wasn't chemical. And by the way, if you're getting treated for stuff like that and you're using meds, great, keep doing it. Um, if you're seeing a psychologist or whatever, great, keep doing it. But in conjunction with that, now that we got the disclaimer out of the way, uh, so Sarah tells me about her friend having like profound social anxiety and stuff like that and it starts to click in my brain like okay this girl was the girl in the dream 
and in the dream I was going up a hill. Now the wedding was at, uh, an, uh, it was outside and it was like an amphitheater. And in this amphitheater there was these large trees and it was a sunny day just like in the dream. I'm like, oh, let's put two and two together. We had the wedding location with the trees and the lighting and then we got the girl that I saw in the dream, hey, might be a God moment and since I was delivered of depression and anxiety, it might be her turn. So at the reception, I, uh, but we're all sitting together and I kind of go you know, sit by this girl and start to start talking socially with her and uh, I'm like, hey, you know, and it's going to sound odd in the video, but it wasn't odd in the moment because it was just a natural progression and it was a good timing and God's presence was there so it wasn't weird I'm like hey do you suffer from anxiety because it was that's what Sarah said and you know I let her know like I was delivered from depression and anxiety and I said listen if, if you don't mind I wouldn't mind praying for you because sometimes good things happen after I pray and she just about starts crying and not in a bad way uh, by the way, it looks beautiful out here. i got to show you guys. Driving home. Anyhow, I have to show you that. It's beautiful. So she just about starts crying in a good way. She goes, listen, I, I was just praying and asking God if I was too far away. And if I was, you know, too far out there. And I just calm, you know, kindly and calmly said, no, you're not. She goes, I know, but... It was just something that was trying to creep in her head. So I talk to her. I give her uh, the, the rundown on identity in Christ. Basically, we are his beloved. His sacrifice makes us whole. And that we don't deny that we encounter things like depression or anxiety. We just deny their right to stay. Uh, if it's chemical, we're allowed to say by his stripes we're healed. And you keep praying that one. And if it's a spirit, you're allowed to take authority over it and to make, command it to leave. Uh, in conjunction with that, what I like to do, and I think it's pretty, pretty important, is you affirm identity that's true in Jesus. Uh, you, I, you affirm the truth, and you have them appropriate it. Like, you are beloved of God. You are the elect of God. You are his beloved. Anything that says otherwise, internally or externally, is a lie and to be rejected. So that helps establish when they do get free, whoever gets free of whatever it is, it doesn't come back. Uh, in the Bible it says, when a spirit leaves a house, if, if that house is empty, it comes back. Finding it cleaned and swept brings comes back in and brings seven other more wicked than itself. So what you do is you fill yourself up with the identity of Christ, which is power. Jesus Christ is Jesus, the power of God, the Son of God. And you fill yourself up with the truth of God so that when these thoughts try to come back, they can't because the house is full, your mind and heart, emotions are full of the truth that God loves me and that anything that says otherwise can just shut up and get out. So I was able to pray for her, and that was cool. And then later on at uh, the reception, I got to see one of my friends from Colorado, and uh, they, they, she was talking about how, dip, how expensive things are out there, and I felt, uh, and it's it, it is an inspiration of faith. It is a gift of faith where you can. Jesus said, "Listen, if you speak to the mountain and you believe and you doubt not in your heart, you can get that mountain to go jump in the lake." Now, obviously, I'm paraphrasing, but it's in the Gospels. Basically, you can have the, have that mountain just go throw itself in the ocean. So, uh, houses are expenses uh, expensive out in Colorado. And I felt a gift of faith for a house for my friends. So in the middle of this reception, uh, I felt the Spirit of God come over my heart. And I prayed in faith for my friend's house. And it would be, uh, it was a release 
of angels to go get their house and to provide for them economically so they can have a house. These are just, those are two of the things, actually three things that's happened today that, to be honest, uh, has made it a pretty cool day. And I just want to share that with you because it's, it is our right to walk in that, not just to have moments of peace and love and acceptance and, you know, helping others and overcoming for others. We can live in it. And it is to move in power. Uh, that's part of who we are. Because uh, God has given us not a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And they're not our, it's not our power, and it's not our love, or our sound mind. It's His. So you appropriate, uh, even if it's just by faith, you're like, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I receive your power, love, and a sound mind. And in time, He will show up. He will do what his, he'll do what he says he's going to do. And you'll be happy. You know, we'll all be happy. And when he shows up, uh, he will look at us. It's, uh, we will become what we behold. And if we keep beholding him, we will look like him. And that's the end game for all of this. So keep beholding God and he will transform you into his likeness and that's nothing but fun so i'm almost home i uh, hope you enjoyed the uh the uber preaching drive this is my uber preaching anytime i'm on a long trip and something cool happens i'm like okay uber preacher so this is uber preacher one signing out you guys be blessed and we'll see you bye